swing entrances. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. In this session, we will discuss swing entrances and how to choose the best option for your project. When we're working with architects and helping them select the correct entrance for an application, what we want to start with is talking about traffic flow. We divide traffic flow into low, medium, and high traffic flow areas. So start to think about a low traffic flow, a library, a church, doctor's office. Think about applications where you're not open all day long. You're not open every day of the week. Traffic flow is lighter, slower. People are not in a rush. They're not in a hurry. It's a very easy, steady flow, limited hours of application. Now step up to thinking about medium. Now let's think about 24 seven applications like malls, which are open seven days a week, longer hours, in some cases, hospitals 24 seven, office buildings have longer hours, people all throughout the week going into it. So there's a little bit higher traffic flow. The pace of the people going through the doors has picked up a little bit. And now high traffic flow. Think about sports arenas, universities, student centers, convention centers, airports where you've got constant traffic flow 24 seven and people are in a hurry, they're moving fast, they're rushing, in many cases carrying things, they're burdened, so they're hitting the door with their bodies instead of their hands. So now we're talking about higher traffic flow areas. When you think about a sports facility such as Cole Center, you can see here, would the door you put on a church hold up at a sports facility like this? Most likely not. There's a very distinct difference in the traffic pattern, the traffic flow. So the first thing that architects need to think about in deciding what entrance to use on a project is what is the traffic flow and start to match the type of door to the traffic flow on the project. Now, the first way we start dividing entrances when we start looking at your options available to you, there's two big silos that all swing doors are gonna fall into. And one of those is single acting, the other is double acting. So let's take a look at what those are. When we refer to a single acting door, that's a door that's gonna open in one direction. The leaf is either gonna swing to the interior or to the exterior, one direction. It's single acting, it's gonna swing in one direction opposed to a double acting door where your leaf is going to swing both to the interior and to the exterior. So double acting, the leaf's going to swing in both directions. So that's the first way we break all swing doors into either single acting or double acting. So we'll take a little bit closer look at these. Here you can see a single acting door. You can see right here there is a door stop that the door is compressed up against the door stop. So with a single acting door, it is offset to the exterior. You can see we're toward the front of the frame, and when the door closes, it compresses against a door stop, and there's a gasket there that helps maintain the air and water seal between the door and the frame. And then here at the meeting between the doors is an adjustable astragal to close off the air gap between the doors. This is a double acting door. First of all, notice it is centered in the frame. So we're centered in the frame here as opposed to being offset. And instead of having a door stop, you can see there's an astragal here and then an astragal between the meeting pairs and then an astragal over here. So the astragal is to try to help maintain the air and the water performance of the door. But since the doors can swing to the interior or the exterior, we don't have a door stop on a double acting door. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.